So, uh, Cotton, today, uh, today's race is a little something special, huh? Yeah, it's a little different. I've never been up here before. This is a weird spot. There's a rusty yep, old this is, shed. Uh, Steve's Garage. Don't be mean to Steve's Is garage. it actually called Steve's Garage? It is, it? it is. It says above the door. Oh my god, are you serious? Oh my yeah. god, it is Steve's Garage. It's Steve's wow. Garage. And and the slug lives within Steve's Garage. Yeah, Got the, the handbrake on the slug. A wonderful, uh, and then, wonderful brick of concrete. But Yes, a co concrete brick that has traction motors. That's literally, literally what it is. Um, I'll have to dig out pictures for my BNSF time. We had two that uh, worked out of my shop that uh, were literally, yeah, is, just Were uh, slugs slug. for road stuff or just for shunting stuff? Almost entirely for shunting stuff. There were some that were over the road too, but uh, more common for shunting because they're really good at the low speed, high amperage stuff. You can put the engine in really, really high power um, from the get-go and it, it'll just pull the universe because you're distributing the current from one alternator or generator from the locomotive across double the amount of traction motors now so huge right. parallel circuits and all that right really uh, really good for crazy traction so all right so we're racing to the coal mine um yeah we're uh, we're at this bottom right corner a little spur here down yeah. at the bottom right we're gonna try and run all the way up to the coal mine so we got two crazy downhill sections uh, the one that we're on to start the the, the, the big start of this and then the uh, the one down to the coal mine itself and uh, we've purposely given ourselves just a de2 and some fun loads of nuclear and then uh, alcohol yeah, nuclear a good combination nuclear waste and alcohol to explode yep. it's a great combo so, so we, it's a perfect Saturday evening is some nuclear waste and alcohol it's, <laughs> some alcohol know. dude that's how I like to party yeah that's how uh, I party and the de2 with no dynamic brakes on the wrong end from the slug which is very heavy. Uh, down the steepest downhill grade in yeah. the map. So, so here's, it's, here's uh, the it's thing. Fine. We are going to be allowed to hook our DE2 up to our slug if we want. Right. Uh, but obviously you have to find a switch to do that. And if you do hook your DE2 up to the slug, you get your DE2 from the front of the train to the back of the train, uh, all of a sudden you're going to have the slug power along with your DE2 power. So it's going to make a big a big difference. Right. You'll, you'll actually be able to pull this because it's about 300 tons all said and done which is going to be a lot for the DE2 uphill, but yeah. DE2 and the slug, that's a case. Is it 300 tons so. with the slug or without the slug? With the slug. Yeah, okay, because the slug's 125 so. tons on its own. Right. It's just... Yeah, and then each tank car is about 23 tons, and then I think it's like 52 for the, All right. the nuclear waste. But uh, let, let's get the show on the road, Yeah, man. we're going to the coal uh, mine. I'm up the CM. I'm standing at the, standing at the handbrake of this slug with uh, with my D T DE2 turned off. Oh yeah, I'm at the same same thing. All right, three, two, one, go. Yep, here we go. Handbrake, Pow, handbrake slug is off. off. Oh god, it's not rolling. It was rolling last time. <laughs> it did roll. It tried to roll away. Uh, breakers, 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 breakers. Okay, never mind. Now mine's rolling. Breaks all the way off. Breaks all the way off. Put her in full beans mode. Oh yeah, notch eleven, go to heaven. Ah uh, no, that's gonna blow the engine in like the first ten seconds. Uh, I mean, I got my traction motors up to about one hundred nineteen degrees. Oh no, uh, I went. I mean, amperage. I went like over a thousand amps right off the bat. Just... Oh yeah, no, I did too, and uh, and I got the temperature up to one hundred nineteen before I shut off. So. <laughs> so will you? You can blow an engine on amperage alone without the temp, or is it only temp that blows it up? The temp is the only thing that'll blow it. You can run the amperage all the way up, but uh, that very quickly increases the temperature. So. Oh, okay. That's all. It just spikes your temp. Yeah. Okay. And then the, here's here's the one. The one. So it's 10 kilometers an hour downhill associated with a 3.5 percent grade. I guess I should squeeze some air on. Yeah. Yeah. This is just the crookedest, squiggliest little track. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to go much faster. This is gonna be an interesting race. I have We're a strategy have here, do. but like, I, I've also never really driven with a slug before, so I don't know. Uh, right now, it's just a really heavy train car, so don't worry about it too much. Yeah. I've also never really driven with. So okay, so slug, it's got. Does it? It doesn't have a brake compressor or anything like that on it built in. Nope, it's just it is traction eight. motors concrete block with traction motors. The one in Deerall Valley doesn't have dynamic brake grids. Um, the ones that I worked with did, so that you could run them in dynamic braking as well, okay. uh, but not not the one in Deerall Valley. Dude, I'm just, I just hear a, a constant brake squeal. Like it's... Pretty much. <laughs> my brakes are gonna be like red hot. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to mitigate. I'm cycle braking right now, so I'm, what, I'm, I'm on break hard and then don't break and then break hard and yeah. I don't know if that's better than just a light break or not, but at least you're cooling the shoes some. I'd yeah, I've been hard. on a light break doing about 15 down this hill. Now I let off the brake. 
Oh, you've been doing 15. I've been doing about 20 the whole time. <laughs> yeah, and now I'm doing 20. Seems like it's it picks up a little bit here. It definitely does. I'm, I'm almost, um, I'm on the big sweeping left-hander before the tunnel. So I'm coming up to that tunnel okay. then. Oh, I see the tunnel up ahead. Okay. Gonna kick off the air. The the steepest hill is after the tunnel down the bridge. That's the really. And he says like five percent or something. I think so. It's ridiculous. That's where our, I came off at the very end when I grabbed the slug originally uh, in my career playthrough. So. Oh God, this turn is so steep. The train Dude, is just ridiculous. like shaking going around it. It's fine. I I love this track. I wish more. There were more tracks like this in the valley that you actually had to run tonnage over because it would be so much fun to just really precision train handle through there you guys ever you ever uh had a wheel skip off a train like only a single wheel does that happen where it skips off the rail like one of the um, leading trucks or something or i'm, I'm assuming yeah, not at the museum because it's a pretty slow track but i mean at technically BNSF. at the museum i have once actually um 491 or big engine uh, she didn't like the fact that the track was not ballasted very well when we started running her uh, and ballasted well a track that's basically ballasted with river rock and dirt uh, is not held in place whatsoever right and so she put the track where she wanted she actually moved it six feet on center and remember it's three foot gauge track so she moved it two track widths over um, oh god it's a 5.5 percent grade holy crap that's fine it's fine it's fine but it's, it's a 50 mile an hour it, speed limit so uh, yeah, send it, dude. Um, I'm actually gonna power into this because, I mean, it, it, honest to God, is a 50. So I'm gonna get a little speed up first, but I know that I'm gonna have to hit the brakes pretty hard sh shortly thereafter. Yeah, she moved the track six feet on center, which was just ridiculous. Um, and it caused a, a bit of an issue where the suspension ran out of travel as she's trying to go around the turn. We knew that it was turning into a kink, and it's Wait, like, man, what? it's feeling a little weird. How does that, I don't understand how that works. How does the suspension run a... Yeah, so the suspension's all connected in the wheels, and everything was trying to move so far, each wheel set, that it came Wait, your up suspension hard. It ran out of like, space it, to move. It doesn't have lateral travel. It only travels vertically, right? So, like... Yeah, but as the wheel sets move laterally, it does affect the suspension because there's centering devices in play and all that right and the wheels aren't they're on a constant radius they're they change as it right and so she ended up running out of travel and all her suspension and she picked up her inside uh pilot wheel the number one the first axle not uh, not driven but the, the lead truck wheel she picked it up and took it about a foot off of the railhead because she's trying to go through the curve so hard and it was just like oh my god I've never seen the color drain out of somebody's face faster than the uh, than the guy who was watching us go through the turn. Like, hey, check this. And we walked really slow, like walking pace through it. And she just absolutely like picked it up. He's like, stop. We how did you get it and, back on the uh, how did you get it back oh, on the track? We just slowly started moving it forward and she set it back down. Oh <laughs> and luckily God. she set it back down on the rail. Holy cow. So it was. Uh, yeah, I've had that. But that's uh, that's the only time I've had something like that. So. All right, I just made it through the switch at the harbor. Uh, I am trying to blow up my traction motors a little bit past that on the hill. That's interesting. I've got a, the, my traction motors are living at about 112 degrees maybe right now. That is unfortunate. Oh, someone commented in the last video that apparently our videos were out of sync last time, but I don't know how that happens. We don't. I didn't... We don't edit them. Right. Separate. So like, like the, the intro know... might be different, but if you if you sync up on the three, two, one, it should be fine. Yeah. Are you are you were you doing any weird like like frame rate changes throughout your video or something? That's like no, no. I didn't do. I didn't change anything. I literally just let it run as it did yeah that's what i thought too but like apparently someone was anyway all right well just strange that's what i thought i thought if you sink it on the three two one we're all everything's all good to go should be that yeah. makes sense to me but i don't know if we're gonna make it up the silicon well you know you're doing the stupid and i'm doing the smart so what are you doing i'm backing into the harbor and i'm gonna hook up my slug to my traction oh my... i see how it is yeah you're being smart, and I'm just trying. I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I, I was like, there's no way I'm going to try this all the way to the coal mine. So I'm backing into the harbor, so I have lots of lots of tracks to run around. And I'm going to hook my slug up to my DE2, and I'm going to put it on the front of my train so I can see where I'm going. And then, boom, done, we're going to put it in notch 8. Well, 
Yeah. That would be smart, he says, watching the Well, I figured you were going to I figured you were just going to send it. And I'm like, I don't trust the DE2 to pull like, you know, my car out of a ditch. So <laughs> Like, it does not pull. That's, that's pretty reasonable, if I'm honest. It's like the worst locomotive. It just, the DE2 is like, oh, you want me to pull two cars? Great. Have you ever heard of overheating? Well, it's this thing that happens. It is this thing that happens. So I hey figure- Hey man, I'm, I'm making it at 14 kilometer an hour right now. We're gonna have a tortoise in the hair situation. That's fine. I, I just, I don't, I don't, there's more hills coming up that get pretty bad, right? Like past that Y that you're going up? Uh, yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I, I don't run this track that often. I know that above the goods factory, there, there's that last uh, hill past the bridge that's pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know if that's the worst or not. Oh, goodness. I yeah, I'm just going to really go grab my slug. It does it matter if my slug's on the front of my DE2 or the back? It does not. It You just have to MU it. You have to MU it. Okay. Yep. Because I'm gonna basically run my DE2 with a really long nose slug on the front of it. Because that just that is that is probably easier to switch out. Yes. Yeah, that's the easiest way to switch out. And then, you know. It oh is yeah, it, it is. is. We are dying in this tunnel right now. I don't want to shove my whole train though, because that just sucks. Like that's. That is the closest I've ever gotten to absolute spice on the traction motor. Like I, there was not daylight between the needle and 120. Oh my god, you're gonna and blow up once and then you're out. never gonna- if, right. you, if you damage your traction motor, right, it loses pulling power now from permanently, doesn't it? Um, if you blow up the traction motor, it depends. It seems sometimes you blow up a motor and sometimes you don't. Um, so, it's interesting. Uh, I'm all stopped in the tunnel, uh, partway through. I'm gonna try and let it cool off and then go again. Um, yeah, otherwise I'm gonna have to back up to the harbor. I mean, goodness, I've only made it about a quarter of the way to the next switch. So unless Con it Con's off... got the strategy this time, guys. I didn't say anything. I didn't want to give it away, but like you know, <laughs> Con knew I was just gonna send. It. I knew you were gonna send it, so I'm like, I'm just gonna not send it because I'm assuming this thing won't make it. And uh, you know, uh, it turns out that you were smarter in planning on uh, uh, this than I was. Don't worry, I'm. That's probably... why. You, that's why you wanted the extra car. I see. You wanted to add the nuclear waste so that we'd have an extra car. I, I just, I've just never is. driven with nuclear waste before. I thought it would be exciting. You know, if I'm going to bin it, I might as well kill the entire population while I'm at it, right? Like, Right. That That's reasonable. Yeah. Otherwise, what are we even doing? All right. So let's unhook this. Unhook. Okay. Well, I put it in forwards and sand and amp. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're not, we're not capable of running forwards, so... Perfect. Uh, looks like Khan's gonna be ahead of me here, everybody. We're don't worry, I still have plenty of time to bin it. Plenty of time. Now, we don't have an actual mission here because we just made this up, so we're just right. parking whatever coal mine track, I guess, you want. And... Right. Park it at the coal mine and then and say when you park it at the coal mine, and that'll be that. I guess, yeah. Oh man, I'm excited. Now the pr now I feel my palms sweating, you know? I'm yeah, like. You, dude, you've got, you've got the chance. I've this got a chance. Shot, this, is, this is my shot, yeah. There's, a, there's okay. a song that talks about this. It's like, you know, you got one shot. Do not miss your chance to, you okay. know, this opportunity comes once in a lifetime. The speed is pretty fast on this alignment. So I'm going to be cheeky and we're going to do some really dumb high speed switching. Because, I mean, what else? What Are you going to like Dutch do? drop to get your... I'm bottling the air and I'm going to just kick the slug. And I'm just going to let it just go. I, Goodbye, I my friend. Wait, you're gonna kick the slug into the, the harbor? The slug, I've kicked, I've kicked the slug. It's gonna go back down the other way, and then I'm gonna drop the the, the train separately from my engine. I'm uncoupling all of oh, this. Oh, in the, the harbor, right you're gonna now. put the slug back on the path that it came down, and then yeah. switch at that yeah. Y. Yeah, so you might save some time on me. I'm switching in the harbor. I thought about doing a Dutch drop. I've done a few before in my own time, just for you know, fun in, in career mode where this you just is... bottle the air. But I, I was thinking in a in a high pressure situation, I should just have myself a siding. That would probably be smarter than what I'm doing. Actually, that's not even probably smarter than what I'm doing. That's absolutely smarter. Well, the only doing. risk you run into is if you accidentally um, like drop your air pressure too early and then your Dutch drop loses its power. Then you got to go repressurize it somehow with a vehicle and that just, it just sucks. Right. Right, yeah. A failed Dutch drop is a very sad thing. Yeah. You can't uh, just... I have no idea how fast the slug is going right now, <laughs> but I'm coming up to the switch almost. Oh god, it's gonna bin it right here, isn't it? Okay, I'm gonna give it a little air. 
Like, little this break. Is, this is kind of amazing. Okay. All right, I gotta grab my slug. This is the longest. I picked the longest siding to. Oh, please don't stop! Please don't stop! Please don't stop! Please don't stop right there! No! 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 Did you... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Did it not make it? Um, 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 remember that? Um, remember that air pressure um, thing we were just talking um, about? Uh, yeah, I just pulsed the brake valve real cute, like, and then it was fine. Nothing blew up yet, surprisingly. Where is my DE2? There it is. Please stop. You have Please to go stop. pressurize your slug Please again. stop. I have four cars or five cars in the dirt on their sides, Con. Oh! One of the, one of the is tank this a reload for heist for once? <laughs> two, of the, two of the tank cars you might, you might are wanna enjoying just, drinking the water. <laughs> you might want to just reload your autosave. Uh, you know what? I'm going to... I'm gonna. Uh, how much money do I have? I have $9,000. I probably can't pay to re-rail these unless there's no re-rail fee. I'm going to find out. There I'm is re-rail fees. Okay. Yeah, I have to, I have to reload. Shh. Crap! Arrgh! Okay, fine. This is great. Uh, how do I this... do that? I've loaded and saved. Uh, when was I not derailed? It'll be your Probably most recent right save for sure. Oh, man. Okay. Well, and also. Feels I good mean, to be is... the pro. Oh, you look, know? Look at, just... look at the pro today. Con's figuring it out. I Con... tried to be too spicy. I, and then... I'm saying this now, though, but I guarantee you I'm going to bin it sometime on this route. All right. It's, I... it's fine. It's fine. I got my slug hooked into my D2. Oh my goodness! Okay, so this stopped everything. Everything's all stopped right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You'll be 100% okay. Just... stopped. All right. Everything is unhooked, but not stopped. But uh, I want some gravity to happen. All right. My slug's in my D2 now. I've never driven with a slug before. Oh, this is sick, dude. Dude, you just put it in notch eight, and it's fine. It, yeah, yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't even get to full amps at all. It doesn't even come close. Yeah, you literally just put it in a It's like 400 it. amps and it just feels like I've, I've got a brick now. I'm driving a brick. Literally, yeah. Literally 300 amps of just hello power. Like, how are you so, doing? For the for the play-by-play, -play, so you understand what happened on my Encon, um, I, I had braked the slug a little bit because I was worried it was going to come off on the curve. And right. then it stopped on the switch. So yeah, it didn't. Well. It did not work well. But then the cars behind it that I didn't break came up behind it, and they derailed on oh, the curb. Oh, they so smashed I was right. it. Yeah. They didn't smash it. They came off the track and went into the drink. Well, that's interesting. So that was hilarious. I can't find the bleed valves on this, so I'm recharging all this crap. I, I have this. a really long nosed train right now. Is is where I'm at. Uh, the bleeder? This oh, is like this free, feels like an American muscle car, honestly. Dude, it's so good. You just put it in eight, it's, and it's just it just goes. It's awesome. Okay, okay. I blew up the traction motor on my DE2. Uh, you did with the slug? I was going in reverse, and I put it in notch eight forward. Oh, oh yeah, don't do that. They don't like that. That's that's bad for the choo-choo. Yeah, well, the it doesn't. Choo-choo does not like that. Oh, I have no I have no traction power. Hold on, there we go. I gotta put the breaker. No, no, don't, 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 no. Why was the coupler not hooked up? I think I'll still be okay, though. I don't think I need a reload for it. You'll probably be fine. You still have seven traction motors. So. Yeah, I still got I still got a ton. If you, if you actually blew one, you may not have actually blown it. Well, it sparked on the D, too. Oh, yeah. The, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, it, when you restart it, sometimes they're actually fine. Okay, that's well, I don't know. That's let, me, let me. I guess I could look at what the damage says, right? Oh, it says 100%. Yeah, you'll have to see if the... Um, you have to see if the traction motors are broken. How do I how do I check that? Uh, if they're if they're like sparky glowy stuffs. No, the wheels aren't sparky. Yeah, then you you might be fine. Yeah, I don't know. I might have just KO'd mine uh, with how spicy that dunk was. Yeah, no, but it says zero 100%, valley. So I'm probably okay. Stop it. I gotta go grab the rest of my train again. I haven't even gotten close to like hooking my train back up. I'm just running around it now, finally. Oh my god! So you're just taking your time switching like ridiculously well i i picked like i said i picked the longest siding to switch on and i'm only doing like 30 down this side well not even i'm doing 20 down this siding but yeah i picked the longest side and the good news is once i get this hooked up we're just gonna notch eight this to victory you know there you go and i've got a nice visibility okay, like now this is now rolling very good so what's the limit on the number of slugs you could put on? Because at some point in time, the amperage output from your motor on your, your DE2 or whatever isn't going to be enough to it's, power. Uh, I think it's hard-coded in-game that you only get the two. 
or, or only the one. Like only one slug. Right. In real life, though, it's all about like what amperage I've, on the. I've I've heard of two being used before, but that's really uncommon. With one diesel. Yeah. Oh goodness! How fast are these tank cars going? All right, there we go. Who knows? Who knows? I guess I don't need to pop the air. What I can do is I can tie a brake. If I can get to a brake. All right, I'm about to hook up to my nuclear waste. I've got the big American muscle car train set up, you know, with the giant freaking hood. This is like the Dodge Viper of train cars, you know? Like it's Dude, it's it's rad. The engine's okay, just this, like, that did not break anything. That's great. We turned the brakes go. on. Okay. I swear to God, if I get going again faster after reloading and all of the shenanigans that I've been doing. Are you Dutch dropping it is still or what? Well, yeah, I did the same exact thing, but just from further down the hill. What are you screaming about, DE2? It's a DE2. It doesn't like living. Well, uh, I mean, you, you do make a salient point there. All right, I'm hooked up. Okay. Where are you, at? In, are you in the harbor yard somewhere? Yeah, I'm in Notch. Well, I'm in the passenger yard at the harbor. This closed. Oh, okay. It's closed, yeah. Oh, wow. This is, this might actually be kind of close. God, I got to run faster now. I got to go hook up to the slug. Yeah, I'm good. I got my brakes pressurized. I'm full forward, notch eight, barely running 500 amps. The slug's just pulling no us to victory. I have no glass left in my DE2. It's fine. You have no glass what? Glass is over glass. Oh, oh, the glass, the glass broke? Yeah, that's fine. That's, yeah. that's, that doesn't matter. Although, the aerodynamics is gonna make me win. That's what's gonna happen. Is that how that works? Yeah. The nice thing is, right. with this route to the coal mine, there's only really, like, it's always turned right at every switch. And there's only oh, three switches. Be, uh, this is fine, 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 this is fine. It's fine, it's fine! Oh! Phew, that was almost chef's kiss, actually. Dude, I thought this I was about slug to dunk at, like, 50 mile an hour. It's so quiet. It's I stalled the DE2. How did I stall an electromechanical? Life's hard. Okay, it's fine. The slug is the slug is so quiet. You don't even hear it. It's just like yeah, it's, it doesn't. It just makes traction motor sense. It's just a big. It's just a big power brick. All right, we got places to be. We're doing good. We're pulling our alcohol and nuclear waste. 40, Are up you past the switch out of the uh, Yeah, I'm the, past the, the switch out of the harbor. Okay, you're officially ahead of me. I'm going 45-ish, 42-ish, up to 40. God, I've got a devilish trick up my sleeve still, so. Uh-oh, I, I don't know what that is. Give it away. Are you spawning another slug? No, no, no. Are you picking up another I'm locomotive? Gonna, I'm not going to spawn anything. I'm not going to pick up another locomotive. Are you switching to steam? <laughs> switching to steam. <laughs> no. Dude, Although this slug, it just pulls. It just pulls up the hill, doesn't care. It's, it's, I'm doing a constant 40. Like, oh, it's losing a little bit of speed. 37, 36. The and slug the doesn't slug have sand, killer. though, does it? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. The Deer Valley Valley's slug, whether or not it has sand. It doesn't seem to have it a looks, sand hatch on the top, it anyway. It looks like it's got sand pipes, sanders in front of the trucks in both directions. Oh, yeah, uh, it does. What the heck? So, I don't know. I think the real ones did, but... There's no hatch on the top to put sand in, though. Oh, you know. Just teleport it in there. All right, so you guys, at the, you guys at the railroad, I know we've talked about this before, but you guys use, like, a pure silica sand, right? Yep. Like, comes from a quarry or something special? Yep. Or? Comes from a quarry, crushed stuff, silica sand. So it's um, as pure as possible, and that's just not to clog your pipes up and stuff? Yeah, if it's got... Dim Impurities and stuff in it, it like actually pumps up, it pumps up really bad. So uh, you really have to have stuff like that for it to actually work. I don't think I've had any breaks, so it's time to go. Time to go. Uh, well, the good news is I can just like leave it notch eight, um, and that's it. The bad news is I'm only doing about thirty now. The hill's two point three degrees. It's fine. Percent. Or, yeah, 2.3%, sorry, yeah. Oh, that's right, I got those brakes on first. Oh, no, we're picking up speed now, going into the tunnel, okay. The slug's doing good. Okay, I'm underway. I'm in notch eight. I got all my brakes off. 
Uh, got great air conditioning. Uh, love that. Oh yeah, you uh, get a little bit I, of an I exhaust forgot. leak, but. Actually, I gotta turn my fan off. I gotta save power to keep my slug going. Is that how that works? The extra half fan. Hey man, technically speaking, that is how it works. It's like 0.1 amps or whatever to run the fan, maybe two amps to run the fan or whatever. That's uh, so amps I'm, I'm not uh, putting into the know, slug. I wonder, on the big engines, they have an auxiliary generator or a companion alternator, depending on the type of locomotive, that takes care of all of the like battery charging and little subsystems and stuff like that. Right. So it's a separate system, separate circuits from the loading circuits. Does it pull, like it pulls diesel from the tanks and then uses it on its own? Uh, no, it's usually a, a mechanically run off of the engine in some way. So you're uh, still losing power from the engine then when you run it. I guess you're technically right, yeah. But the, That's like turning off your air conditioner in your car to get more power, you know? But I don't, I don't know how much it affects you, though, is the thing. Like, the engine's usually got enough huevos to, to run the alt for whatever load it needs, regardless. So, yeah. I don't know. It's interesting because, like... You know, we, we joke about it, but technically speaking, thermodynamics is, is actually true. If you have a closed system and you put only so much power into the system through fuel, then you can only pull that amount of power out of it. So if you're consuming that power for something else, technically, according to the laws of thermodynamics and energy conservation, uh, you know. Well, yes, unless your locomotive engine is oversized and capable of supplying right. more power than the alternator needs, in which case, yes, you're using more fuel for the same effort. Uh, but it's not affecting the loading, it's just uh, right. You're still, yeah, yeah, work. exactly, 100%. If all the devices consuming the output are, let's say, like, you know, a couple thousand watts or whatever, or horsepower, then, you know, if your engine can produce more than that, it's irrelevant. You'll never, right. yeah. No, I agree. It, it's, just, it's just cool how all that math works. So anyway, long story short, I turned off my cabin fan to get more more speed out of my <laughs> Right, that's... Uh, that, I, I that debated on turning off the lights, too, but it's only like a single bulb, so I feel like I'm okay. I don't know if they simulated that or not. Can you imagine? Derail Valley Ultimate Simulator Edition? I'm gonna turn off the lights. Turn I think, off the uh, lights and fan. The strat. That's the strat that Con's not picking up on. Yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a spot there where I bogged down to about 15 km an hour with the slug, but it just kept pulling, so that's good. That's that's what it does. This, this combo will pull the world. It really will. Right. Muy, muy strong. God, they are such a cluster, though. These setups, it's not just one MU cable, because you have to send all of the actual traction motor leads across from the alternator, right? And those are heavy, heavy, heavy-duty uh, freaking... Uh, DC conductors usually. Uh, at least on the, the stuff that actually ran slugs, I think we're all DC. There are AC motored locomotives these days, but um, everything that I saw that had a slug was DC still. So you're okay, talking so they're, about they're heavy DC. duty DC cabling. Yeah, so they're they're gonna be big, big copper cables, like massive. Yeah, they're like they're like three or four off. Are they are they thousand amps cables. like D Rail Valley shows or like what's the amperage on that stuff? Um so I'm just comparing what I've seen on the SD40 that we have at the museum, which uh, the stuff that ran slugs, they were paired with SD40s, from what I can recall. Uh, the amperage would be less because of the slug, but the SD40 with six traction motors is designed for a continuous load limit of like 1,300 or 1,400 amps. Yeah, you need, with a, big, a, burst, you need a big cable burst capability of up to like 15 or 1600 i mean ridiculous amounts of amps as i'm preparing to get butchered by every electrical engineer in the comments uh for those who don't know amperage is like the uh current flowing through something and voltage is the potential difference between two points yes so yeah, that's, voltage that's would be like pressure in a hose and amperage would be the amount of water flowing through the hose and, and you, one amp will kill you so you know not even it's like fine. half an amp across your heart kills you isn't it I, I think you're right. I think it's half an amp is guaranteed. Death. Yeah, half an amp is and like... Then, and then there's, like, potential of death down to, like, milliamps of something. Yeah, so, yeah. like, when we did... When we did uh, when I did paint robots and stuff, we sprayed with high voltage um, to create static electricity so the paint would stick to the car. So you ground the car, which means the car has zero volts, and the paint we would give it 60,000 volts at 0 .001 microamps. So it's, like, one millionth of an amp. Like, it's, like, a tiny, tiny amount of amperage. So it's not a whole lot of wattage because power is amps times volt, but it creates this massive difference in potential energy between the paint that you're spraying and the part itself. 
so you end up seeing the paint flow through the air and actually like move and wrap down to the part like a really, really powerful static balloon. And that's how you make sure you always have an even coat because as the paint layer builds up in thickness, the resistance increases, which means the paint wraps to different areas. That's how it always guarantees a smooth coat no matter how you paint it. Dude, that's so freaking cool. It's like, smart, right? Yeah, super smart. It's super easy to get yeah. great results that way. We, right, uh, so like we still have to program the robots to like cover right. all the areas of the part and all the areas of the car, but we don't have to be like nitpicky about overlap like to an extent. Like we have to have a little bit of overlap between paths. But at the end of the day, as the resistance of the paint increases, you know, boom, done. Also, the sparkle in your car paint is little flakes of aluminum, and the voltage causes the aluminum to stand up, which is what makes it sparkle. If it was, like, just sprayed, normally it would be flat and it would be dull, but because it's standing up, it makes it sparkle. That's super cool. It only works because you spray with a really high voltage. That's why if you try and, like, spray in your garage or something and you try and get the same results that, like, you know, a, a professional paint shop does, you're never going to do it because you, you have to spray with a high voltage to get that static effect. Ground your part, spray with voltage. The problem is if your part's not grounded, 60,000 volts sparks. And if 60,000 volts sparks... Splatter, yeah. Well, we've had it happen, so it became the, the, the paint robot became a flamethrower where it sparked, oh. lit all the paint on fire, oh. and then and then started spewing fire onto the part, so the part got caught on fire. But then the paint robot, at the end of each stroke, turns off the paint, so then the flame went off on the robot, and then it came back on with, like, fresh, wet paint and put out the fire. <laughs> it was great. That's crazy. It was just... And you're like, oh, my God, that's a lot of fire. And then it goes... And, oh, no fire. And then... Oh, put out the fire. Okay, we're good. That part's wrecked. I only ever got to see high potential crazy voltage stuff once at the railroad. Uh, sometimes there's an electrical defect in the engine that you can't trace, or in the locomotive you can't trace, I'm trying to figure out one of the many systems. Uh, there's positive ground, negative ground, low voltage systems, then there's the high voltage system. There's a ton of different electrical stuff going on in a locomotive. And sometimes you couldn't trace it, you couldn't detect it. And so you back flush it by doing a high pot test where you take the car body of the locomotive, which is normally your ground, and you pump it up to something like a million volts and uh, find what smokes. <laughs> and that's, know, where the, that's where the ground is. And that, you know, that's, that's not, the, the ultimate that's, troubleshooting test. That's not a great solution. That, that's why I only saw it once. That's when the you're last dealing resort. with stuff that's flammable, you know, like it's. Well, you, 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 you're not talking about arcing it across the fuel tank. You know? Like we accidentally, you know, had a flamethrower. We didn't intentionally create a flamethrower, you know. Like it's. <laughs> it's a very fine. different situation. Accidental flamethrower. Name of my next band. Yeah, there man. Hundred percent. Oh, we had some funny stuff in automotive. It was great. I loved working in, in big factories just because the, the... To me, it wasn't about whatever product you're building. I didn't care about the product you're building. It's cool. You're making car parts, whatever. But, like, the, it, the way you make them is so much cooler than how they're, like, than what they are. Yeah, the, the, the little processes that go into the little details yeah, on the back end. And that was, so and cool. that was my whole job. I was, a, like, essentially, a, I had different names, uh, for, like, different titles. Through, but, but essentially, every job I worked in, I was a process engineer. I would always deal with, like, how do you improve the process, fix the process, make the process work better, you know. And, uh, and yeah, it was, it was always just a fun time dealing with hilarious situations where robots do stupid things they're not supposed to. I can only imagine. Oh, well, we had I've, we had to I've write a program the, uh... one time because so robots have like paint lines and like there's a couple different kinds of paint robots that I worked with. There's like really two. One is canister load and one is non canister load, right? Canister load is exactly that. It's got a big canister on the on the robot arm. The canister has a big piston on the back. You know, like a caulking gun, like you know, like a caulk gun, right? It's essentially right. like that. That's a canister load. And what it does is it it fills up the canister with whatever paint color you want. It first blasts it out with solvent and then it fills it with whatever color you want and they calculate based on like previous paint paths and stuff it knows how much color it needs right so it'll fill it with let's say like 80 cc's or 100 cc's of paint or whatever the heck it needs right and then it'll blast that out and then whatever's left it'll blast into like a dump valve like a dump drain it'll blast the rest of the canister to empty it spray it out with solvent put a new canister of color and boom done problem solved right so you waste a little bit of paint but that's a canister load and the other type of system is like the, the lines where you have literally tons of different lines going to the robot. 
But with those, the line system, you still need, you still only have one line in the robot arm itself. You've got what's called a valve block right before the robot that has all the different colors. So you still have to purge that one line between like the valve block and the robot, but then it switches gotcha. the colors and it can spray, like you could spray that continuously. It doesn't have to come back and reload the canister ever. It just sprays forever, right? But you still have one line in the robot arm. The advantage of a canister load, you don't have to worry about the fact that you have one line in the robot arm, right? Now robots, this is where the story gets fun. I love, this is one of those like, 50 different systems come together and you forget how they work. So, robots have this weird thing where they always try and find the shortest way to get from point A to point B. And when you program a robot, you're essentially giving it like its coordinates. You're saying, I want you to be at X, Y, Z with rotations R, X, R, Y, R, Z, right? And, and that's, that's where I want you to be. And then I want you to take X amount of time to go from point A to point B to point B, B to point C, and so on and so forth, right? And do all these movements. And robots will kind of interpolate that a little bit. So you can program them. They, they won't have to go exactly to the point you tell them to go to. They can just kind of create an arc between the points that you give them, right? Yeah, it smooths out the motion, right? Right. So sometimes they try to figure it out. So we had a program that would, would rotate 180 degrees, and then because of momentum and motors and stuff, the robot would kind of rotate a little bit past. So the fastest position to get back was now to continue the rotation in the same direction and not rotate back the way it came, right? So you right. run that program okay. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times, all of a sudden that line inside the robot is twisted up like 12, 13, 14 times. Now, I don't know if you've ever tried twisting like a rope and like continue to ah. twist it in the same direction. What happens? Now so do they that don't with have like a, a... They don't have a like um, any sort of like swivel connection no, to no, God, no, 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 just, okay. it, no, 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 it does not. It's like a syringe tube almost that handles like 60 PSI pain. Anyway, oh, yeah, long... I guess you, you, yeah, you couldn't really, you yeah. probably could, but it would be very expensive and kind of pointless. Gotcha. Yeah, so long yeah. story short, that, uh, yeah, it, it, we had a robot that all of a sudden were like, hey, uh, it's not spraying paint. Hey, why is there paint coming out of the joints in the robot arm? Oh. <laughs> and then it was like, oh. It's wrapped itself up. And the it is wrapped itself up. Yeah, that's great. So then we had to write a program in that would basically uh, the robot re remember which way it rotated and it would force it to rotate back the opposite direction just to like, you know, like, hey man, don't be stupid. You went you went to the right, go back to the left, you know, even though it's slightly right. longer. That's funny. Oh, but, I, uh, ro yeah. Robots are great, man. They're the, they're the, the best. They're they so do fun. exactly what you tell them to do. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes that's a problem. They're very stupid. It's hilarious. So, Con, uh, where, where are you at on the railroad here, my friend? Uh, I'm about to pass the goods factory. Okay, you're still ahead of me. I'm, I'm giving it full beans right now. I was kind of coasting for a bit there because it was a downhill. And I didn't want to pick up too much speed. But now I'm on an uphill. I'm doing about 60. Coming up to the goods factory. Yeehaw. I'm trying not to derail because derail is game over for me, you know? That, like, that is what that is what would be super game over for sure yeah so i'm just trying to like the speed limits here are mostly 80 there's a few 60s i've been making sure i'm always under the speed limit how fast can a slug actually pull uh it it has a lesser top speed because you're reducing the total amperage that the motors can make right. so I, I think it is slower i'm not sure exactly how much slower it is i feel like i'm, do, I'm doing it, 55 right now and it, it doesn't seem like i'm accelerating any and i'm at full beans i think that that might be the cap Anyway, yeah, just like your poop stories on BNSF, I have a lot of stories about automotive. I have a you, lot you got that are paint stories. <laughs> I have, well, yeah, I worked in paint mostly with paint robots. That was like my bread and butter for a lot of it. I've worked in stamping too, and I've worked with welding robots as well. I did a lot of different stuff, um, stamping like big metal presses and stuff, right? Ooh, the scary fun stuff. Yeah, the stuff. It's cool. They're so big, like. So, like, the biggest press I ever saw was 230,000 pounds per half of the die. So each die is 460,000 pounds total, and there were seven oh dies in a row that all moved up and down at the same time. So, like, yeah, you're talking 1.4 million pounds moving up and dropping, at a, and it would do it once every, like, 50 seconds. So you just have this boom! Boom! And like you're as you walk by it, the floor shakes like it's messed up. It's pretty rough. That must have been insanity, dude. Oh yeah, it's it's huge. It's just insane. And it's cool because it's like, well, that's just that's just they load these things with rails, so they have these big rail systems. And so what happens is the dies come down 
from the press onto this massive rail and then it gets slid out and then the other die is put onto the other rail and it gets brought in and then they have these massive overhead cranes that carry, you know, like big bay cranes, right? I'm sure you guys right. had them at the train shop. Like massive, you know, 500,000 pound capacity cranes, right? And they I would lift the whole die up and, and move it onto these rails and then back to these storage bays. Apparently the concrete in that bay was like 16 feet thick is what they told me. In the I wouldn't be surprised. It's yeah. so funny. Um, the shop that I worked at, I just recently found out that it's closing for good in about a week, which breaks my heart. But the one in, in that's uh, the way it goes uh, up in Seattle, the Seattle, Interbay Diesel yeah. Shop, 1929 Roundhouse, and uh, December 1st will be its final day. Which Are is, they still uh, keeping like the shunting and stuff, or is the whole yard going? Oh, the yards stay in there for sure, but they they've outsourced all the maintenance to different shops, and and wow. that's that. So bummer but that's the way it goes i mean honestly it was kind of a bad location for the way the railroad built out so i understand why they're getting rid of it but it makes me sad but uh the back shop was built by the great northern the original owner right and bnsf formed out of many different railroads uh, great northern being one of them and they had this huge bridge crane put in and it's supported by the brick wall foundation on the one side and then on the other side, it's supported by a bunch of uh, riveted iron trusses. Right. And it was a, like a 40 or 50 ton bridge crane. And it got derated to seven and a half tons because the civil loading couldn't take it. Wow. The, just like the old structure. And the, and the railroad used it for a long time as a 50 ton crane. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's compressive forces, it's fine. It's fine. Compression is, fine. you know, compression is strong. Everything's strong. We try and crush it. Right, exactly. It's just not strong when you try and pull it apart. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. <laughs> they had, um, so these these big dies, they would lift dies with big Kevlar straps. Every die had these four, it looked like boat anchor, um, not boat anchor, you know, boat, what are those things called? The davits or whatever on a boat? The big round things you see on the harbors, you know? That the, 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 the ropes go around? Yeah, yeah, I don't know what those are I, called. I don't know what those are called either. I'm not very nautically inclined. Yeah, anyway, every die had four of those on it, right? One on each corner. And they would lift oh, wow. them with these big Kevlar straps. Like, I'm talking like four-inch diameter Kevlar straps that would hook into the crane. And that's how they would lift them. They wouldn't use chains. Chains slip. Kevlar is nice and tough, and it doesn't scratch on the metal, and it, you know, it, it stays intact and blah, 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 right? The guys lifting the dies wore hard hats. The guys with the crane operator. When they were moving a die, when they had a die <laughs> up on a crane, they had a huge radius. Like, you were not allowed to get anywhere close to them at all. Nowhere close to the die. Like, because even if it drops, the amount of force that you're dropping on the ground from, like, you know, six feet up or ten feet up or whatever is insane. Like, they would stack dies on top of each other to store them, because you can easily do that. Um, so you'd have, the, like, if you drop the die from ten feet up, like, the it's just, you know, you drop even a small die that weighs 60 or 70,000 pounds, it's still a lot of force to drop, right? Right. So the hard hat's going to save them, right? Right. So they, yeah, so they would wear hard hats. And I remember, like, one of my first days there, I'm, oh, my boss takes me out, he shows me these guys moving the die, and I'm like, this is awesome, right? He's like, we got to stand, like, you know, 100 feet back, whatever. And I'm like, great. And I'm like... I, I asked my boss, he said, why are they wearing hard hats? Like, surely they know that the hard hat's not going to do anything. And I swear to God, without my boss even blinking an eye, he just looks at me and he says, oh, that's so they can see where the guy was standing when the die fell and hit him on the head because the hard hat will leave a circle on the floor. Oh and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, are you serious? Like, it's, like, <laughs> yikes. You're like, okay, great. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. That's nice. Sean, I, I, I hate to interrupt your automotive stories, but uh, I had a, a, a blip on my dash and a sound, and I looked and I saw a gauge come on that I hadn't seen before. I'm almost out of fuel. You're almost out of fuel. How are, how are you doing? I'm at the red line for fuel, but I still have, I'm above the red still. Okay, I'm below the red. I must have used more than I'm you just now. crossing through the switch north of the goods factory now. You're just, okay, I'm just behind you goodness i'm at full like full reg full 100 this is a hill climb like i, I don't know Dude, how fast... this is this is quite the climb yeah i'm only doing like 20 oh now i'm picking up speed again 25 did you so... coast at all though have you been see i coasted no. for a big section i i hardly did not coast and, and i'll i'll now let you in on on my trick because you asked about the slug having a lower top speed uh when it was flat i disconnected the slug and i was doing 72 the whole time uh and so my engine was running full speed so i was using more fuel which is why i'm 
in the predicament that, that I'm in. Makes... But I think I'm going to have enough to make it to the switch to the coal mine, and then it's all downhill from there, literally. Yeah, so and then we just have to full send it. It's going to become a game of who, who breaks the latest down the hill. The coal uh, mine's a pretty smooth hill, too. It is. I love so how we've just been sort of we've just now. been sort of having this podcast this entire time because the slug is really just to like put it in full gear and let it dry. Right, itself. literally, it's it's a return to form. The podcast is back, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, we're just we're just podcasting the stories. We're we're at a hundred a hundred. There's nothing else we could do other than tell stories because the gameplay is so riveting. At the yeah, moment. the gameplay is not. I mean, this is real life railroading. I feel like we would have fun if we were railroading together. We would just uh, absolutely, dude. No, just for I would for just real. chill. You gotta, gotta come play trains. Come on. Yeah, for real. Well, yeah, for sure. You gotta show me how to get a coal shovel sucked into a fire. <laughs> you try not to do that. Yeah, well, you know. It's it's happened, and it will happen again, I'm sure. I've never seen it happen in prison. What, hap uh, what happens to the rest but... of the shovel? Like, the, the metal doesn't melt, does it? Because it's steel. It wouldn't be that hot in the fire. Uh, you sure about that? <laughs> your, your fires get hot enough to melt steel, like, actually? That is why you have to keep the crown sheet covered with water, because the fire is hot enough to actually melt the firebox. <laughs> That's nuts. They okay. burn it close to 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit under crazy draft. I mean, so then at what the museum, you end up, we're you not end up working that like hard. A molten mess of steel shovel on the bottom of your, and you're like, yeah, oh, they're I... they're pretty thin. I'd bet that you'd melt and warp. It would warp first. It'd take a while to melt, but I bet you'd melt the, the actual shovel. But usually, what happens is they get sucked in, and, and you can fish them out with the rake before they get to that point, uh, right. and before even the wood goes up. I mean, obviously, if you were working like ridiculous tonnage and you threw it in and lost it. Okay, well that's one thing. But I heard they used to, used to on the railroad they used to uh, go to the bathroom in a shovel and then just put it in the fire to eliminate the waste. I've heard that if you had a number two, because I mean you don't really have much other option. Uh, the number one, I mean you just go over the side as you do. Yeah. So that's a, <laughs> that is very unfortunate for the person <laughs> who just happens to be watching trades one day. Just, oh, okay. All right, they're just doing that. That's fine. It just, yeah. it just gets it, you know. It just Speaking happens. of it, so I didn't know this. Uh, I got the caboose in my last career episode. Right. The caboose has a Turkish toilet in it. I don't know what that means. Uh, it it's is a hole. toilet where it's a hole in the ground with places for your feet so you can squat over the hole. Oh, oh, perfect. Yeah. Weren't those, like, <laughs> outlawed in stations and stuff? Because, like, you know... Well, yeah, but you weren't supposed to use the toilet while in the station in a caboose or in a passenger car because back in the day it just dropped down on the track before, you know, right. uh, sanitation tanks and things and sucker trucks and all that fun. That so. would still suck. Like, even if you didn't use it in a station, you just have, like, random crap on the track as you're... Uh, literally, yeah. I, yeah. You, you gotta shudder to think of what M.O.W. had to deal with. Right? Why is the bell... Oh, someone ate Taco Bell before they went on yeah. the train. <laughs> Hey man, it seems like trains have been getting a lot of wheel slip coming out of uh, the station. Oh really? Weird. Let's go take a look. Oh, the track is. Oh, oh no. It's a it's a poo poo track. Oh no. <laughs> hey, we gotta um, change that know. one tie over there. Okay, how much poop is on the tie? All of it. All of the poop. How, are you are you clear the coal mine switch yet? No, I'm getting close. How's your fuel? Mine's in the red now. Mine is flashing right now. It it's about. It's got, it's like maybe a sixth or an eighth of the red left. I have like it's actually, getting close like, to bingo. Yeah, I'm just under a quarter tank is where I'm at, which is in the red, but I'm not. And I'm just clearing the switch now going into the coal mine. Oh God, I, I'm just, I'm so close. Is it gonna make it under power? Like, do I dare back down and lose some speed? And, but slow the engine down to use less fuel or do I just keep it full pegged? Cause it's so close. Well, the problem you have is that a save is not going to fix your problem. Uh, yeah, precisely. Uh, I think if, if I run out of fuel and I don't coast past the switch, I think I'm hosed. Yeah, unless you spot another DE2 to pull yourself up. Right. I can see the switch. It's lined over. Or can you fill your fuel? Is there a, a fuel repair? Uh, on the comms radio? Yeah. I don't think so, no. All right, I'm, I'm clear of the switch. I'm at the part where it says that we're on level track and I'm heading down. I know I'm I still have to go quick anyway. here though, because if I go slow, all of a sudden Heist is gonna come flying past me at like a hundred down this freaking hill. Right. How many times do you run this hill? What's the speed limit? Do you know? Uh, downhill? Actually, I actually don't know the speed limits downhill on the coal mine hill. 
I usually leave out of it. I don't think I've ever actually run to the coal mine, so we're running. Yeah, it would only be here. a logistics Oh, no! Haul. Are you out? I'm out of fuel. I'm out of fuel. It's coasting. It's coasting, uh, and I'm at the switch, and it's still a 1% grade! Okay. Uh, I'm not throwing in the towel yet. Uh, do I... Do, uh, Con, do I spawn a DE2? Or do I spawn uh, an SO60? Your choice. I mean, you can spawn a DE2 to give yourself the fuel and pull yourself. You still gotta hook it to get it hooked up, but... I think okay. I've won this race no matter what you do, honestly. As long uh, as I unless, unless I give it just all of the beans down the hill. Yeah, because even if you reload, you're at zero momentum, so you just burn all your fuel trying to get right. any sort of speed. Now, dude, this picks up quick down this hill. I bet. Okay, I've spawned the next one, and I got blessed with another SDNS skin. All right, nice. Nice. Yeah, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to chill down this hill. I got my engine off again. See, I conserved fuel in that mid part. I didn't even do it intentionally, and look at how much that helped me. <laughs> it, it turned out that that was that a was big part of the equation here. Yeah, apparently, when you had the chance to coast, just coast. Yeah, uh, cause yeah, literally at the switch, I ran out. Oh my god! All right, full beans. Come on, come on, come on, come right. on, come on, go. You put so, a second uh, I have to on be, it. I have to be recklessly stupid down this hill. Yeah, I mean, I'm doing I'm doing 50 right now, so I'm gonna have to do speed limit plus. I don't know what, uh, the and speed it's gonna limit end is. in fireworks, or I'm gonna somehow win. That's 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 how this is going. Can I clutch victory from the jaws of defeat? I or don't... will Khan clutch defeat from the jaws of victory? I think I feel like the smart thing was switching into the harbor initially, and you know I think that was I think that was the play. I the, that, that was, was for sure the the first the first correct play you made. Yeah, if you had done the same thing and then also disconnected your DE2 from the like the multi-unit disconnect, that's really smart on straights. I should have done that. Yeah, but that's what killed my fuel, though, is the thing. It was faster, but it, it did run out of fuel. So. True. Okay, well, the speed limit says I can do 60, and I'm doing 23. So, come on, speed, power, beans. I'm gonna, I'm gonna unhook Oh my unhook god, I the, just uh, had, I just, like, my heart just exploded there for a second. I felt like I was gonna Did you almost it. come off? Oh, dude, I hit a corner, like, at speed, and I was like, this corner looks fine, I don't know what the speed limit is, and it just started grinding, like, I, I, I cranked the, the brake. The spicy derail sounds. Oh, yeah. it was brutal. Okay, it says it's 60 here. Alright, I am now popping the MU cable, and I'm just gonna overload these traction motors. I see for the all of the speed in the switches. world. Thousand amps. I see the coal mine switches. Speed and power, baby. I don't know which one I'm gonna go into. I'm gonna apply some brake. It's uh, smoking now. Feel like this might be my first victory, even though it's not it, a real I, mission. I, I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> it's pretty not sure a real mission, one. though. All right, 80, and it's 1.8 downhill. All right. Let's All right. Coke some more speed out of these sails. Come on. I gotta find myself an empty lane to park this thing in. All right, We're going. We don't yard. need traction motors. <laughs> I'm entering the yard. Okay, I think Khan has officially won this. I haven't found a lane yet. I'm still on the hill. I'm I'm in notch eight, going downhill. Or actually, notch eleven. I am full send downhill. Just the DE2. My traction motors are still super hot. I'm doing seventy. I found a lane. <laughs> I barely Doing had, I have 70. like one eighth of a tank of fuel left. Amazing. I don't think I'm just, you know, I think you're gonna park and stop and win. And I think I'm just gonna see uh, where this comes off and how fast and enjoy it. I think that's what's happening on my end. There's a corner. There's a corner right before the coal mine that uh, is- I am a... officially, I'm officially in free cam. Watching the uh, watching the train go, just absolute full send. I can't believe how large the slug is. It's kind of ridiculous. It's a, it's a DE6 cut down. Okay, there we go. We're off. We're All off. Right. There it goes. Full break. And the boys, there it is. Full break. There we go. Victory is mine. Congratulations, sir. You won this time. <laughs> we'll get him next time. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, now I'm Good gonna put it to in uh, notch eight, turn off my brake, and see what happens. There you go. Yeah, uh, the boys are now going off one by one. Oh, there's just a there's just a stop at the end of the perfect at the end of the coal mine here. I'm just gonna full there send. There we go. It. I was I was thinking that the other one wasn't gonna go, and now finally, Come on. Uh, I'm the one that nuked the hillside. Come on, come on, faster. This thing, this slug, I'm not gonna lie, it's probably great for shunting. It does not accelerate for... No, it uh, it slows you down quite considerably in terms yeah. of acceleration. But apparently the D6 is pretty good. I still haven't tried it that way. All right, so. here we go. Full speed. I love how the game conveniently autosaved right as I'm driving full speed towards this this barrier. It's like it knows. It knows. You're, you're doing something stupid. This full speed is pretty terrible too, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, we're gonna hit the end of track. Okay, we shoved that right off the end of track. The slug went off. We went off. Okay, the slug is going down the hill. It's dragging us with it. My train is surprisingly still intact. Wow. Oh, my locomotive oh. just blew up. Now it's... That's that's fun. I always forget that the locomotives can blow up. The diesel engines can blow up, too. Wow. That was the saddest derail of my life, dude. Was it? Yeah, I just, I went down into the mine pit a little bit, and it just was very unsatisfying. Nothing really blew up. Just Doesn't matter, though, here. I won, so get out of here. Oh, my God, my train's you, wrecked. You, you did. Con won, guys, and, and it was genuine. There was not, it was even circumstances and everything. There wasn't even a handicap. Yeah. You just made the smart decisions, and uh, I was heist. But to be fair, <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, we weren't running steam. That so, is true. That is true. You know, I gotta, but, uh, I gotta win a steam race to feel really satisfied here. Winning these diesel races, you know, it's you just kind of pull the throttle out, and you're good to go, and make some smart decisions. But the uh, the steam race, that's that's what I'm looking forward to. So uh, yeah, gonna have to happen. Yep, we're gonna have to do another steamer one. Yep. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. We will catch you all next time. See ya.